Mrs. Kinley's cottage sits on a hill overlooking Thomas's branch line. The engines whistle happily to her as she waves from the upstairs window. She has been a friend to the railway for many years and the engines loved her very much. One day, Toby stopped at a signal near the cottage. Mrs. Kindley was tending to her garden. Toby gave her a cheerful ding-ding on his bell. Hello, Toby, she said. It is good to see you. What are you doing? Toby asked. I'm digging up my old flowers, she replied. The ones from last season have died. Ah, flowers are delicate things, said Toby. You get new flowers, but they never can replace the beauty of what came before. I couldn't agree more, smiled Mrs. Kindley. I just wish I could keep the cottage looking as good as my flowers. At this age, it's hard to keep up with it all. T Toby, do you have time to take me into town to buy new flowers? I, I must get groceries, too. Of course, Toby said. And as the signal dropped, he and Mrs. Kindley left for the next station. At the junction, Mrs. Kinley thanked Toby and walked slowly away. Toby was sad to see that it was becoming harder and harder for her to do the things she once was able to do. Toby became pensive about this and told the others later that day. Ah, she's getting old, Thomas sighed. I do wish there was a way we could make things easier for her. What if we make deliveries? I can ask the foreman to load anything she needs into my vans, Percy said cheerfully. And I can bring her friends to visit her in Henrietta, Toby added. That's settled then, Thomas smiled. If we all pitch in wherever we can, we can make a big difference for Mrs. Kindley. The engines were as good as their word, making a special stop each day at Mrs. Kindley's cottage to bring much needed food and fellowship. Thomas's driver and fireman helped her plant her new flowers and neighbors helped clean the cottage from top to bottom. Soon it looked better than ever before and Mrs. Kinley thanked the engines, their drivers and all of her friends for their hard work. It makes an old woman smile to have such wonderful friends, she said. Thomas, Percy and Toby all beamed. Over the next few weeks, the engines didn't see Mrs. Kindley as much. They made their deliveries, but men and women that the engines hadn't met before came to receive them. They weren't neighbors or friends. One day, Toby thought to ask one of these men. We are part of Mrs. Kindley's hospice team, he said. Toby gave a pained look. He knew what that meant. Is she very ill? Toby asked, sadly. I'm afraid so. We're taking good care of her, said the man. She's comfortable. She asks about you and the others. Toby smiled. Please tell her that we are thinking of her and love her very much. I will, he said and walked up to the cottage. Toby told the others the sad news. It's a shame. She was always there for us over the years and now she's helpless. At least we were able to give her one last gift, Thomas said. Her cottage is beautiful and her flowers are beginning to bloom. The three engines sighed and sat in silence for some time, thinking about Mrs. Kindley. One day shortly thereafter, Toby stopped at the cottage, hoping to speak to one of the nurses again, but found only a short man in a black suit. Hello, he said. While we appreciate your deliveries, we are no longer accepting them due to Mrs. Kindley's passing. Toby's heart sank. When did it happen? Toby asked mournfully. Last night, she passed away peacefully. The man turned and left Toby alone at the signal. Toby looked up and saw the blooms. Vibrant reds, blues, and yellows sparkled in the sunshine. They're beautiful, but can never replace what came before, Toby said to himself, thinking of his friend, Mrs. Kindley. But no matter how sad he felt, the new life blossoming at the cottage reminded him that Mrs. Kindley was still there. Goodbye, Mrs. Kindley.